Just how important is visual information? Visual information helps us to recognize objects, navigate spaces, complete tasks, or even understand YouTube videos. Imagine trying to brush your teeth or get ready in the morning without being able to locate your brush, toothpaste, or clothes visually. As someone privileged to have healthy and functioning vision, it's hard to picture the difficulty that individuals with visual impairment face in their everyday lives. With so much of our world revolving around what we can see, accessibility for the blind and visually impaired is far more limited than it should be. During my trip to India over the last three weeks, I was fortunate to get the opportunity to meet students, teachers, and the principal of a school for the blind and visually impaired. Observing a specialized classroom was an insightful experience, and I was glad to have the chance to talk to some students about the classroom differences and the teacher about the teaching methods used in the class. Information was primarily presented and communicated audibly through speech or audiobooks and tactilely with Braille. The students showed me how they use Braille, a tactile writing system, to read and write. They are very passionate about English and reading, and we discussed various topics, from poetry and stories, to the differences in our respective schools. When they told me that math was their weakest subject due to difficulties presenting mathematical concepts about the use of visual information, the struggle of learning without sight started to dawn on me. Whiteboards, diagrams, images, and visual presentations, landmark resources in my school classes, were inaccessible to these students. Later, as my family and I gave sweets to the students, it was saddening to think that these same kids couldn't see what they were receiving in their hands. In addition to experiencing a blind classroom, I got to present the idea showcased in this video to the principal and some of the students. Visual information, a domain entirely obscured from these students, could be provided to them with computers. Even more opportunities for, augment for augmenting learning with technology became evident. The visit was a considerable learning experience that showed me how privileged I am and gave me hope that developments in the field of artificial general intelligence can help people that don't have the same privilege. In the hope of creating an assistive technology that balances accessibility, performance, potential, and costs, I've recently been working on a project to provide multiple visual capabilities with multimodal AI. These capabilities include image captioning for identifying what's going on in a given scene, and visual question answering for specific questions about the features and relationships of objects in the scene's context. For example, if you're doing laundry, it could tell you the color of a specific piece of clothing. Answer me this. What color is the sweatshirt on the left? Blue. Or, if you're struggling to find something, it could determine the location of this object you're trying to find by relating it to something else in the scene. Answer me this. Where is my controller? On the desk. What makes it more interesting is that most technology used in this project is still evolving. Multimodal AI used in this project for visual task completion is a growing paradigm that might be something far more powerful in the near future. With the unification of different architectures and tasks, and the broadening of what's possible with AI, multimodal systems are really something to look forward to. As artificial general intelligence gets better at understanding tasks as humans would, expanding accessibility and automation in the human world becomes that much easier. AI can be used to create solutions that benefit everyone, including those with disabilities. If you're unfamiliar with multimodal AI, I gave a brief explanation in my last video, but here's the rundown. Multimodal AI systems can ingest and process multiple types of data or modalities to extract the meaning and relationship between them. Human intelligence is intelligent because it accounts for and thrives on the presence of multiple forms of data. When you're reading a book, actually, better example, as you watch a YouTube video, various aspects are taken into account when trying to make sense of the video. As you watch it, you're trying to visually understand everything going on in the video, audibly correlate the words being said or the noises being heard, and linguistically understand the text in the video as well as the title or description. That's a lot of things to do, but multimodal integration in our brain makes them much more straightforward. Similarly, although it's not as good as the human brain just yet, multimodal AI can take data from different domains such as visual, auditory, and linguistic, and more, and process them to find relational meaning. For this project, I found an interesting pre-trained transformer called OFA, standing for One for All, which unifies a wide range of tasks from image captioning, to visual grounding, to visual question answering, classification, and much more. I'll link the paper in the description if you're interested in learning more. With its beta hugging face transformer support, I use OFA for its image captioning and visual question answering VQA capabilities. Given a picture, the model can extract the features, including the objects detected and their locations. Using this information, the model can generate a caption that describes what's going on in the image. If a specific question is provided, it can logically deduce an answer using the extracted features. Now, how are pictures taken for the model to process? Earlier I mentioned accessibility and cost efficiency as goals of this project. Well, the device used to take pictures is $10 and it can fit just about anywhere. 
The ESP32 CAM, along with the ESP32S chip, is an ideal IoT device as it's small, cheap, has a Wi-Fi module, and can take pictures at good enough quality for captioning and question answering. Regarding accessibility, I wanted to include a trigger to give the ESP32 the go-ahead to take a picture and process it. I initially thought of possibly using a tactile trigger such as a button, but that would have limited user control. So I thought of voice commands and speech to text with a microphone. That idea was quickly ruled out due to the limited I.O. of the ESP32 CAM and the entailed half to peripherals. Finally, I decided to use a virtual assistant. Since virtual assistants can handle speech to text and natural language understanding, they're just about the perfect front end service. Additionally, from the perspective of someone with visual impairments, a hands-free, voice-operated solution to process commands would improve usability, and that's pretty important. I went the Alexa route and developed a custom skill with the Alexa Skills Kit. Alright, now let's recap. This project relies on three central components. OFA, a transformer model that can answer questions, if provided, about the contents of a picture or generate a caption that describes it. The ESP32, a small and cheap IoT device to take photos for OFA to process. And Alexa, a virtual assistant that can take speech commands from the user and do something based on them. Let's put it all together. By that, I just mean a whole lot of HTTP requests. The entry point is Alexa. The user can provide two types of commands, a command to caption what they see, or a command to answer a specific question about what they see. An AWS Lambda function then handles the event as transcribed by Alexa. The Lambda function sends an HTTP GET request to a Flask server running on my local machine. From there, another HTTP GET request is sent, this time to a web server on the ESP32. The ESP32 takes a still photo and returns it to the Flask server. Locally, the OFA model takes the photo and the optional question if the user provided one in the initial Alexa command and uses them as input. The model then generates a caption or an answer that the Lambda receives as a response and returns to Alexa who says it out loud for the user to hear. If that was confusing, let's walk through a sample execution. Say the user wants to know what's on their desk. Hey Alexa, what's on my desk? From there, the Lambda function sends the request with the question to the local server. The local server makes another GET request to the ESP32 to get a still photo. It uses the photo and the original question as inputs and generates an answer using the OFA model. The answer is sent back through the Lambda function until it reaches Alexa, who says it out loud for the user to hear. Just like that, the user can get an audible description of what they see, solely using their voice. Pretty cool, right? Now, you might want to see it in action. I've mounted the ESP32 on some glasses for demonstration purposes and recorded some responses. Here they are. Answer me this. What's on the desk? Lamp. What is this? This is a photo of a laptop and a pen on a desk. Answer me this, is there a pencil on the desk? Yes. Caption this. A potted plant in the corner of the room. Answer me this, how many pencils do you see? Answer me this. What is to the right of the potted plant? A desk. Answer me this. What is to the left of the controller? A potted plant. Answer me this. What color is the potted plant? Green.